Yeah, it's a smaller industry here, especially like after living in London and like getting involved in the industry over there. Coming back here, you're just like, man, it is so small and so niche. It's, it's unfortunate that that's almost unheard of that sentence that you just said like <laughs> that you're just in this awesome place where you're like i'm creative and having fun and it's great oh dude anyway. you'd bring mari into a game studio and just have like <laughs> 36 <laughs> udims with like 8k things they're like what are you doing man <laughs> first of all Thanks, obviously, for coming on. Um, it's really cool to chat with you, you know, fellow Aussie as well, seeing yeah. someone that's quote unquote made it, which is great. So yeah, thanks, dude. All good. Yeah, your latest work, obviously, like with the eye tutorial and stuff is silly good. I feel like you and Sefki and Ian Spriggs are like jockeying for that top position of who can make the most realistic CG character at the moment. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I feel like I need to put more time into it, but my... Um... My day job's taking up a lot of my time at the moment. And, yeah. and I also mentor for Think Tank, so that takes up time as well. But um, oh, really? yeah, like I, um, I'm not sure if, like I think those guys are, are ahead of me for sure in terms of like the quality of work that they're putting out. But yeah, I'd, it's cool that you think that I'm in a similar level to those guys. So it was it was actually interesting. I listened to Ian Spriggs on Jay Hill the other day. Yes. Yeah, and he was like, yeah, I need to start adding some motion to my um tutorials. And yeah. I sorry, to my to my artworks. And um and I think Sefki started that because I saw Sefki do it and I was like, oh crap. Like I gotta I gotta try that now too. So yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know like who's being influenced by who, but yeah, I wonder if there is some sort of influence going on there yeah no it's killer work man like it's and it's like you said it's really um like niche and unique like because there is own like there's a lot of people that are probably at that 90 percent, but then there's just like that extra level where it's like dude i can't tell if this is a real photo or you know those little yeah. snippets of the eyes and stuff like the things that you've yeah, really yeah. nailed yeah that's yeah like, I, I i really hone in on on the yeah. detail like that's that's what i'm always trying to achieve and also yeah. that's kind of like the, the they they always say like the devil's in the details so um it, man. yeah but it, it's about balancing like texture resolution and and things like that to try and get the the right result yep um my shader setups are actually really simple but it's more like getting the fundament fundamentals right like mm. getting the the value and the hue of the diffuse correct and then getting like the level of displacement looking right and then like a bunch of cleanup especially like around the eye you yep. end up doing heaps of cleanup like because even if you are using v face from from xyz yeah like the eyes never properly like grab all the details so i'm always like adding extra wrinkles and like and refining like the the upper eyelid and things like that so yeah yeah yeah, yeah it's it's a it's a bit of an obsession i guess yeah and, and it kind of needs to be that's <laughs> i was just about to say dude it has to be right like there's no way you're getting that level of high fidelity work unless you're just obsessed with getting to that extra one, two, three percent, which is the thing that separates it from all the rest of it. But yeah, no, it's awesome, dude. Yeah, start of 2024, the gaming industry has had obviously like a shitload of lay layoffs and yeah, stuff Yeah, crazy layoffs. Yeah, VFX had the you know hiatus at the end of last year with all the strikes and stuff how's the um how's the start of 2024 been for you as far as because i can see you've been jumping around a lot of different places and stuff so um so yeah i was, I was working at blur and then like their work got a little thin yep. and so i i was kind of like the last one in so you're kind of like the first one out sort of sort of deal gotcha. like the other guys had been there longer um and so they were like oh we just we have this low spot for like three months and so like we're just gonna we're gonna have to let you go but we should have a project coming back on in three months so i was like oh i'll just like re start reaching out to people and see if i can get another job and um yeah david from altered effects he'd been reaching out to me over many years like just checking in and like just being just suggesting we collaborate or something and then i just decided to reach out to him and he was like oh we have something for you right now and i was like sweet wow. so i had no downtime which was good between dropping off from blur but then um yeah altered's been great i've really enjoyed the like working with them and it's really creatively rewarding and um so the three months came up and um and yeah i just decided to to stay 
with with them so yeah i've just been working with them through through the like all the unfortunate like layoffs and yeah. and the the actors strike and stuff like that and so yeah i feel super lucky to be in that position but um yeah it's it's a small company and something that i've learned um through my like working at so many places is i i prefer working at smaller studios yeah okay, and so these guys these guys have been around for like two three years and um but they're they're basically in the early stages of like a blur i guess like blur's been around for what like 25 to 30 years like i think maybe 27 Mm. um but yeah these guys are just like a couple years old they're doing really good work though with a small team and yeah i I really enjoy i really enjoy working with them they're yeah they're great um bosses and yeah Yeah, cool so yeah it's awesome yeah i had a look at some of their work um like on the website it looks great the um is it predominantly vfx work like i saw that there's some game work in there is it like more yep. cinematic work for games or is it actually like engine pipeline stuff as well so yeah they're like they're basically just like doing marketing um so it's kind of like doing cinematics when you see yeah. some of like the because there's been cinematics that have come out and they're kind of cut they're cut with cinematic work which we're doing and then also game res stuff so yeah it's kind of like a combination but we're trying to push more to like alter the keen to get more work which is more like realistic and more diverse and stuff like that so yeah that's why it's (laughs) well yeah yeah and it's it's really cool and yeah it's it's yeah it's the work's been fun and challenging i think i've done my best professional work with them so like and it's pushing me like and i i always feed off being challenged yeah. and every day feels like a challenge which like is good like it keeps me interested and yeah it's it's great <laughs> it's it's unfortunate that that's almost unheard of that sentence that you um, yeah. especially hearing from someone who's been in so many different places to go yeah this is the type of thing that i like i mean it almost like hones into the truth of, you know, I've had my test subjects over here. Like, you know, I've got a pretty good like test case of, of things where I've worked and I've got a pretty good idea of what, of what works for me, which is, that's awesome, man. Yeah. Cause I, like I moved back from London, uh, to Australia, uh, it was right at the end of COVID. So it, it was at the start of, um, 2018, 20, 2019. I can't even remember now. Um, I've been, I've been back here for two years. So uh, okay, 20, yeah. So 2021. And yeah, I started at, um, I came here to work at uh, ILM. I, could, I I managed to snag the job before leaving London and then work there. And like, it, it's, ILM's a great company. They are super well-structured, really great management. They look after you as an artist. They respect you as an artist. And those are all massive check boxes for me, but yep. the work just wasn't diverse enough for me. And they, they, they're they not used to working with, like their pipeline wasn't set up to work with generalists who like myself, who like to work across multiple departments. Gotcha. And so, yeah, unfortunately it just didn't um, work out. But yeah, if you just stick me on modeling for 12 months, like I'm not gonna be happy. Sure. Like I'm gonna be like, I'm done see ya so yeah um whereas altered is the complete opposite where it's just like oh you're doing everything like (laughs) and and more than you're comfortable with doing so um yeah it's yeah it's really cool like that so i think for me because like if you're a specialist and you're working at ilm like if you're just a texture artist then it's a really great place to work um there's yeah it would meet all your needs but yeah Yeah. for me it was specifically just that like working across departments thing which which i tend to need which um mpc gave me in london which was awesome it was cool at mpc to work for a company that was like yeah just go for it you can do whatever you want any department all departments whatever just what whatever the workload was that i could like take and then yeah basically do that so yeah 
it's it cha- it's different between every company i find yeah yeah no i bet the um i, I had i sort of had a feeling it was like that that, that this altered effects was more like into leaning into that s- sort of thing you've pr- predominantly always worked in vfx has a lot of people who are in vfx or games kind of have that like i want to try the other one sort of thing have you ever had that maybe one day you want to you want to jump over to you know real-time work um yeah so i i have actually applied for a couple of games jobs like there was a point in time where it was as i was leaving ilm i wasn't 100 percent sure where i was gonna land um because i was talking to blur and they were like oh we might have something for you um and then i was like oh i'll apply for some game studios but yeah, I've never been able to land a job at a game studio, and I think that's primarily because I have no um, real-time rendering uh, characters in gotcha. my portfolio. Yeah, it's all like VFX-based, like yeah, non-real-time. Um, yeah. So yeah, I think if I was really serious about it, I would like jump on Unreal Engine and I would create a character specifically for Unreal Engine and make sure it's working in the engine, and then showcase that to be like, hey, this. Is what i can do otherwise like yeah people aren't gonna hire you like you kind of need to um tweak your portfolio to work for, for for what they're looking for basically otherwise they're like oh this guy's never worked on a game and also i'm a tricky situation where i have the skills to make the characters but i'd be a junior level in terms of like integrating that into the game yeah. so i'm like a senior artist with junior technical skills so mm. that to me that sounds like a liability so that's so um, interesting I, I i was thinking that in your unique case like for example if you were to look at your portfolio it's like you, you might transcend the the fact that you don't have the engine stuff because i completely get it like when people are looking for someone if you're looking to hire someone in a industry you need to have the skills you need to demonstrate you have those skills right but i would i would have thought maybe um looking at yours saying look we can work out how to re apologize with this guy and, you know, get someone For else sure. on it because, like, he could be doing the highest polys and stuff like that. Um, but, yeah, no, that's really interesting, man. Um, I, I think, like, maybe if I applied to heaps of games jobs and I just went, like, I am switching to games, like, sure. I'm out of the VFX industry, yeah. then, like, I'm sure there'd be some companies that would be like, okay, yeah, you have the foundational skills, like, we'll just, like, teach you or, or coach you through, like, yep. some of the technical stuff because, like I know I obviously know how to retopo but like I've never had to consider like triangle count or like mm. I know I know you need to keep like edges in certain places and like then the way that you do the UVs is important for the normal maps to work correctly to get like the best result and I've never done any of that stuff I'm just like let's throw displacement at it let's add subdivisions at render time hit render like yeah, yeah. so it, it like yeah I that, that that's the way i see it anyway like i'd be a liability in that i don't have experience in games but yeah I, as you said I, i'm sure there's someone that there would be a company out there who's like oh yeah we'll, we'll take you on we'll show you that stuff but yeah um, anyway <laughs> oh dude you'd bring mari into a game studio <laughs> and just have yeah no i'd probably be switching to substance for sure yeah <laughs> do, you, do you are you using substance at all at the moment like no i experience? know I, I i know the basics of it but every time i jumped in it to be like oh i'll do this asset in this software and i'd get halfway through and i'd be like i can do all this in mari and i can do it better so like yeah why am i if it ain't broke why why fix it you know so yeah i was just like i'll just stick to what i know and and I'm in an industry where I can use Mari for any job. Like, mm. there's never been a job that's like, you have to use Substance that I've applied for. So, and actually, a lot of the companies, like the big studios, like ILM, I when I was there, they were hiring junior texture artists in who yeah. were like, I've never touched Mari, I only know Substance. And they're like, well, we, we like our base pipeline is ba- built around Mari, so you have to learn Mari. And so then they were like a little bit hesitant because they're like, yeah. Well, I want the job at ILM, but I've got to learn Mari. And so, yeah, it's it's kind of interesting in that way. But um, yeah, a lot of, all, like, all the big studios use Mari as their primary texturing tool. So, yeah, like, unless I was switching to games, like, yeah, I don't see the point in switching to Substance. Yeah, no, for sure. I kind of see, I kind of see Mari and, and Substance as like that, like, Substance is the less barrier of entry to get in. Like, Mari is obviously, mm-hmm. like, a lot deeper 
um i see the same like a similar thing with like marvelous designer and zbrush where it's like you can do it in Z, you could you know you can make clothes in zbrush but then there's this other program that's obviously has better results but a, a steeper learning curve to be able to do it so yeah it's just kind of trying to find that middle ground of like where how can you get good results without kind of burning yourself out learning too much different stuff but for yeah, sure what, like you said why would you change like if you're killing it using using mari it's like at the end of the day someone says can you generate textures can you make this look like this or it's, yeah what, what would the difference be you know yeah for sure yeah at the end of the day you're outputting 2d images which that's it are going on the mesh so yeah yeah, yeah no 100 percent, man um like we said before it's it's really cool talking to a fellow australian who's quote unquote made it <laughs> um yeah the australian market isn't exactly flooded with local opportunities um for mm -hmm. people in our industry um like a lot of other parts of the world altered effects is remote fully remote yeah yeah i they're also kind of cool in that they don't really have a brick and mortar they're just they're literally they're literally a global studio so yeah, well, yeah they've okay. got people all around the world working for them and um yeah I, I i i i like that aspect of it as well because they're leaning into i think COVID brought on this effect of like remote work yeah. and um being able to do your job from anywhere in the world and so i th th there's like there's positives and negatives to that though because i feel my experience in the studio like as i was developing as an artist was super super important like i could not imagine going um straight from like getting your first job as a remote artist because there's so much development and problem solving that we would always do in groups like yeah. especially at like luma pictures that was like probably the most that was the studio where i had the most collaboration with everyone and and we were all like the whole asset team was all on a very similar level at that studio and so we were all kind of like learning together and bouncing off each other and like it like it sounds so weird now but mm. like th this was like when i started there it was like 10 years ago or maybe a little bit more um we'd be like oh i, I worked out the best settings to export displacement out of zbrush um which today to me just is like seems so silly but we did <laughs> like we didn't know what like the buttons meant and none yeah. of us thought to look in the documentation back then and so yeah we were just like i remember like doing tests where i'd like try different buttons and output and then like see which and then do renders of each one and then see what one gave me the best fidelity and stuff yeah. like that so but like yeah, we would bounce off things like that with each other and learn faster, basically, because mm -hmm. we were all like doing different things and then learning. Yeah, so working in a studio environment, I think when you're starting out in the industry is really important. But at, at this point in my life, I'm at a I'm at a point where I don't know. I my, my wife is also remote, so we both like we're kind of like workmates. Um, yeah which is kind of cool like we, we can discuss like we can have a meeting and then like say to each other like oh that was a rough meeting or like yeah have have kind of water cooler conversations with your <laughs> wife which is interesting i guess but um yeah i just i prefer the re more relaxed li li lifestyle and i live two blocks from the beach so i'll go for a swim at lunchtime and yeah i just prefer it, it just because like when i was at ilm they were still doing one day in office during the during the week Mm. And that day that I'd go into the office, I'm not that far from the office, so I'd ride my bike there. Um, and so, it, like, really, it, it wasn't that much, but I would feel the least productive and the most worn out at the end of the day on the day that I'd go into the office. So yeah. I'm like, what's the point of this? Like, I'm, yeah, yeah l l least productive and more worn out to, like, do personal work at the end of the day or whatever yeah. and so yeah i i'm just at a point where yeah the remote stuff for me is pretty awesome yeah i mean when when you were saying before about like the you can only get so much from being remote like i mean like you would never start being a remote artist because you know the literally rubbing shoulders with people is where you kind of like if you, if you are starting in the industry that's kind of where you know oh that's how you do that that's how you do this like you sort of figure it out with other people around you and yes yeah and you and you, and you take things from them as well i yeah. like the i like the idea that that studios are becoming more remote like like you said not brick and mortar places but yeah for place for someone in australia or someone somewhere that has like a lack of 
opportunity would you would you mm -hmm. recommend it as a good avenue for getting your foot in the door somewhere like a remote joint um like if you have no other option and there is a place willing to bring you on as a remote artist like obviously getting your foot in the door and getting the job that takes like that that's priority so yeah. like i would not it, like if i was in that position i would not turn down a remote job but it would would, would probably be with the goal of then moving on to a bigger studio maybe after a year mm -hmm. where i like am in-house and and yeah and it's actually interesting I say this because my career development was basically I was living in I was I studied in Brisbane and then I got my first job at a studio called Liquid Animation because there was there was literally like oh man that might have been my only option back then because yeah. this was like so many years ago yeah this was well, what year would have it been um 2011 or something like that so yeah that was like my only option yeah so I worked there for a year and then um left and then I couldn't get couldn't get any work I, I'm a junior I've got one year of experience and then I just started like freelancing and taking like contract work from home which was not earning me much money and it was like really kind of like pretty shitty jobs yeah. i was very lucky in that through word of mouth a guy who was much more experienced in the industry who lived at byron bay and was doing a bunch of like remote stuff even back then mm. he took kind of took me under his wing and then i like was just helping him do projects and then he'd pay me for for like what I did, the work I did, but I was basically remoting for, for a year back then when I was a junior. Wow. Um, and then it was, it wasn't until at the end of that year where Luma put out that they were hiring. And this was at a time where any job that came up on my radar, I would just apply. Like I didn't even background check the company yeah. and, and this, and then Luma, I, I applied and then I background checked the company and it said they only had a studio in LA. And I asked myself, I was like, if they interviewed me and accepted me, would I move to LA for the job? And at the time I was like, I don't think I would. Yeah. And so, um, but then luckily enough, what they were doing is they were sourcing um, how much, how many applicants they would get in Vancouver and in um, Melbourne. And then they ended up d deciding on Melbourne. And then they were like, oh, no, 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 we're, we're coming to Melbourne. Like, we want to interview you. And I was like, oh, wow. And then, wow, yeah, everything just fell into place. And then I flew from Brisbane to Melbourne, found an apartment, and then started working for them. And I, I stayed there for five years. So Crazy. So they based yeah. the move off, like, where the where the sort of the talent pool was sort of thing yeah i i think so yeah i think they because i noticed i don't know what website i was on because this was like i think it was before linkedin did this sort of thing yeah but i could see that they had applications in vancouver and melbourne and mm. i was like i was like they don't have a studio in either of those places so yeah. why like they've only got a studio in la but they were looking to branch out globally to yeah. to another another country so yeah oh dude you're breaking the fourth wall there that's like <laughs> that's like a, some insight of like how they how they build stuff that's crazy yeah yeah it was pretty cool um your new tu eye tutorial looks crazy yep. good um so in an age where you know you can just buy assets and rip stuff out the part that i really like about your new eye tutorial is that you go over things like things that you can't buy like eye positioning you know mm -hmm. uh bespoke uh irises and stuff for characters like i feel like that's a huge part in your artwork in your portfolio is that the eyes are bespoke to the character so like you could you can buy a whole bunch of eyes off any place or rip something out of metahuman but if you're making a chimp or if you're making an orc or if you're making the dark elf or or any of these awesome pieces a lot of the greatness of the piece <laughs> comes from the eyes so oh, like cool. i think i just think it's really cool man that you're putting so much emphasis on this as a tutorial um yep. yeah give us give us a bit of, about the about the tutorial um yeah i just i basically well it's called um creating a realistic eye 3.0 yeah so i've done obviously two of these in the past but it's ba it's actually a really good um like measuring stick of my skill and my and like how how like i've refined my workflow and process i guess but um yeah as you said the eyes are like 
in my opinion, they're the most important part of, of a character because that's the part where humans focus. So, yeah, um, yeah I think putting in the time and, and really nailing like the dimensions, the position of the eye and the head and, and yeah. all these things is, is super important. Um, and then like adjusting like eyes for, for my different pieces is really important as well. I, I obviously don't go over that in the, in the tutorial, but yeah. I use the same base structure that I show in that tutorial across all my characters. So yeah. like what, once I make an eye once I can kind of, I just kind of use it for every character moving forward. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like, yeah, it's basically just, it's my whole career of like detail and, and just refining the shape and, and things like that all baked down in, into one, into one t tutorial. So yeah, I also go over the groom in that. So like how I create the eyelashes and the eyebrows and things. Oh, great. So yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. I'll put all the links to that, um, down below as well so people can grab it because like yeah i think like it, it is something that like i said before it is you can kind of skip over that these days like i remember years ago when it was like you need to make your own eye or you need to figure out how to make good eyes for a character yeah and then mm -hmm. these days it's like you know like the meta human stuff they got all that black magic going on in the background that makes like the yep. refraction and stuff going on with their eyes and then you can get like you know an arnold rendered or a bl or cycles or whatever from flip normals or something and just drag it into your scene and it yeah. just looks dope straight away and it's and you're kind of mm -hmm. missing that like those really important things like when you look on your at your work it's like something's different here <laughs> yeah yeah ma yeah ma making it from scratch is like i don't know i i have the most control then and control, and like yeah. i and and i can balance everything to how i want it and i know where because even though like i'm not hand painting the um the veins in the sclera for example but mm. i'm grabbing those from a source that i know like is going to be the most realistic uh, result that I can get and that and that's what my aim is to get mm. the most realistic result so yeah and then and then just like looking at the eye I, I see I see a lot of people they add the veins to the like bump of the eye which if you look at reference of eyeballs that's not the case like the eye the the veins on the eye should not be like bumping out and and then catching highlights the veins yeah. are kind of like underneath this layer of the mm. sclera and so it's more like a low frequency or you could also consider it a high frequency like just um noise that's on the on the surface of the eye so yeah it's just things like that that i i just would prefer to have total control over but but also it's it's also the challenge of like trying to make the most realistic eye i i can and yeah. so yeah i i think that's why this is this is the third one that i'm putting out because i'm like okay i've hit a new level of of level of quality and so yeah. i'm like okay i've, I've ch enough, enough things have changed in my process and what i've learned that it's worthwhile updating this tutorial so yeah yeah uh, yeah like i mean i haven't really seen any you know anything that's even close to it so it's sort of like one of a kind in a way because of what i was saying before that it's just like people can feel like it's an element that they can skip over but yeah definitely definitely check it yeah. out the the fact that you are even doing tutorials like with, while also working and also doing super high-end quality portfolio work how do you this is a bit of a tech techie nerdy question for someone like me who's, who's a bit of a scatterbrain yep. how do you how do you keep your stuff organized how what what pro do you use any programs or um sort of like organizational skills to to manage all this stuff or is it is it just brute force? um no it's yeah i just use like windows files like as default um i think i i i guess from working at different studios and seeing like their folder management structures yeah that that's probably helped me in some way but um yeah really i have like a personal folder i have a work folder and i have like a tutorials folder and depending on what i'm working on like that stuff will all be in those structures and then like fed into their own file structures and things like that so yeah, fair enough, yeah. yeah I, th I think it's just something that you learn um especially like i remember the first time i worked at luma and to like get to a character you had to go through like so many file structures mm -hmm. but then i learned later on that 
that's and i was like this seems so unnecessary because at home i was used to being like my folder and then open my project where i i didn't have much like management or structure in the yeah. folders but then you find out that like once you start working with more complex stuff um like in terms of like when i do a, a character like i've got the textures i've got the x gen i've got the the model i've got the z brush file i've got the marvelous designer files i've got the renders i've got the test renders i've got the sequence renders like yeah. Yeah, yeah. I just structure everything so that I know exactly where it is, and and it and it yeah, and it works. Right, wow, that's cool, man. I just I, I from you know starting to dabble in YouTube and and doing personal work, and then my actual full time job as well. I just I'm like yep. I get really interested in how people manage this sort of stuff, like whether they have you know like a notion board or like something you know something yeah, like that. No, but... I I'm not that far. I I'm <laughs> even like I also like the the like just writing on a, a notepad i do Dude, that yeah. too like but but that but that's more day-to-day -day management of like this is what i want to achieve at the end of the day sort of thing yeah so, love it man yeah. yeah sick um yeah like we spoke before about the animating of the models it's something that i really want to get into and something that i've sure noticed that's kind of that next elevation of because i love looking at nice still renders but i kind of feel like when the last few months i mean the metahuman stuff has helped because it's like a it's a it's a shorter barrier of entry for some people to see where they go look at this cool realistic moving model bringing movement to um a piece and how that's important to like i don't know bring bring life to like yeah. it, it, it it's that next stage of bringing life to to a piece um because yeah. like like when i was doing i guess when i started doing personal work i was like oh rigging rigging just seemed like so technical and something that i was like i never want to do that and i never want to think about that but i'm at yeah. a point now where i'm my 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 skills for modeling texturing look dev groom have gotten to a point where i'm i'm happy with that my skill level in that and so now i'm like oh now what if i start net what if i now rig it and start to make it move kind of like um ian spriggs in his uh interview with jay hill the recent one he was yeah. like i i think i'm at a uh, i'm at a point now where i need to start making these move and he even brought up and showed like a, a basic rig that he'd set up and things like that so i think bringing movement to the character is just like the next step in in this process yeah um yeah yeah i think that i think in this day and age as well like where not, not everyone's trying to pivot you know like when it comes to personal stuff i mean big studios are going to be doing their things all the time um i uh, predominantly a lot of my work my the money income that i do for work is through arc viz which is still images and yep. it seems like ai seems to be like the thing <laughs> that's going to be coming after that stuff first yeah 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 so for sure I, it's scary yeah like the still stuff that you've that you've been doing like even you know diversifying it just that little bit and learning that extra skill set it's like you you're you're almost like buying yourself extra years and being like nothing's going to be coming after this anytime soon yeah yeah true yeah ah uh, yeah yeah you can think about it that way as well for sure yeah P -p separating yourself from the still images because like and they do have like ai videos that are coming out now but yeah they're mm. still a ways off but i'm i'm hoping they're like more like 10 years off rather than three years off so yeah. <laughs> we'll wait and see yeah i mean we've seen we've seen the AI, like some ai stuff come in as far as like useful tools and stuff with with inside inside programs like that can sure that can help your workflow and everything but um yeah so hopefully it doesn't come as far as like the actually taking the work to the point where it's producing yeah. frames for films and stuff like that yeah yeah t t taking the work away from the artist that's the scariest part for sure yeah that's it man yeah so thanks obviously thanks heaps man for your time um it was really yeah no worries I i've you know people that are in the 3d industry that are following there's that you know upper percentage of people that we want to be talking to and want to be picking their brain about so and you're in that percent so yeah it's really cool to see could see how well you've been doing and how like many places you've been going and all the different diversity and what you've been doing so yeah thanks for sharing us sharing us your time man yeah no worries thanks for having me yeah it's it's cool to meet you and yeah hopefully we can do this again sometime yeah it's just it's fun great. to have a chat and shoot the shit on um the industry you know yeah it's crazy to think we were living around the corner from each other before yeah <laughs> yeah it's crazy yeah. yeah well yeah enjoy that sydney weather man and um yeah we'll catch up soon all right awesome thanks, thanks. brother